Hi there, this is Eric for Ochoy. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with image textures when using Octane for Maya. And for this video, I'm using the machinery underscore O1.mac. I'm going to select this piece right here on our machine, go to the Octane render shelf, and click on this green icon to add a glossy material. Let's go to the attribute editor for that glossy material. And here in the diffuse slot, I'm going to click on this checker box to pull up the create render node window. And just keep in mind, we only want to use Octane Textures when working with Octane for Maya. I'm going to expand the Octane Textures section and click on Image so we can see that there are three types of image textures that we can use. We can use Image Texture for standard red, green, and blue mapping to, say, a diffuse channel or other channels that accept uh, color input. We can use Float Image Texture for grayscale images. In other words, images that have a value between 0 and 1. That's great for channels such as roughness or bump or sheen or so on. Uh, and by using a grayscale image or a float image texture, you can reduce the amount of texture overhead placed on the GPU in rendering. Then we have the Octane Alpha image texture, similar to the float image texture, except that it is using the alpha channel of an image. And it's great to use to map to things like the opacity channel of material to create kind of cutout effects. So let's click on Octane image texture. I'm going to click on this folder icon here in the attributes for the image texture and that'll bring up our source images folder and I want to find the panel 06 diffuse.png file and I'll click on that and you can see there's our image texture automatically it's mapped to the object using the object's UVs there are other ways to map the texture to the surface which we will cover in a later video but the default is to use the UVs of the surface there are a number of settings in here. The main ones that I want to take a look at are the power and gamma. So if I reduce the power, basically it's going to make the image darker. So that's pretty straightforward. And then of course the gamma is going to adjust the mid values. So if I set this to one, we're going to get a lighter image. If I set it to say three, we get a darker image and so on. So it's just a standard gamma adjustment. And then we also have the option to invert the texture by clicking on this invert button right here. So you can see it, it's, it's inverting the colors. Now, if we wanted to use an image sequence, for instance, what we can do is I'm going to create a polygon cylinder. Let's move it up here above our little machine. It looks invisible at the moment. That's okay. We'll fix it in just a second. And let's leave it like that. I'm going to click on my little refresh pre-cache button here that I made from a script. Demonstrated that in an earlier video, but essentially what it does is it automates the process for adjusting the frames to pre-cache, which forces Maya to update the view. So now we have the cylinder here. I'm going to add a diffuse material to it. So it's selected. I'll click on diffuse material to apply diffuse material. Let's go into the Octane diffuse material. I'm going to click on the checker box next to diffuse, pull up the create render node window, and let's choose an octane image texture. Now click on this folder icon and I want to find the folder called noise underscore SEQ for noise sequence. So this is just a really simple sequence of noise that I created in After Effects at about a minute. So it's nothing fancy, but I'll click on this. You can see it's mapped now to that cylinder. And then to actually activate the uh, sequence, I'll go down here to use image sequence. And you can see from the image number rollout here, 44 is the same as the frame number. The frame offset value down here below image number allows you to offset the number of frames in case you needed to start on a different frame of the sequence. Uh, these can be a little bit stubborn, so if they're grayed out, try selecting a different node and then reselecting the image node and they should appear and become available. That's basically how that works. So let's get rid of this. So let's select this panel right here and go to its material tab called Metal 01. And I'll click on the checkerboard next to roughness, pull up the Create Render Node window, and let's choose Octane Float Image Texture. I'll click on this folder icon and I want to use the 
panel 06 noise.png texture. So you can see that's plugged into the roughness channel. So you can see it's giving us a little bit of roughness there. Likewise, I can go down here to the bump channel as to octane float image texture again. And this time I'll close this time I'll click on panel 06 bump. So you can see now we can see that the bump is applied to the surface along with the roughness. If you want to adjust the strength of the bump, you can use the power slider here in the attribute editor for that bump texture. So we bring it all the way down, we have no bump, and then I can just gradually increase it as needed. And I can overclock this by typing in a value higher than one. Let's go back into that roughness channel and we can adjust the gamma and the power to either make the image lighter or darker. And that will make the surface more or less rough, making it more or less shiny. So that's roughness for you. Let's take a look at working with alpha textures. So if I go into Photoshop, I have an image here called Panel 06 Alpha. It's a blank image. If I take a look in the channels though, I'll click on the alpha channel. Here's what the alpha channel looks like. So I've saved this as a TIFF with an alpha channel. So make sure you save it a format that supports an alpha channel, such as TIFF, PNG, or EXR. Then I'm gonna go down to, in the Material tab, find the opacity, I'll click on this checkerboard icon next to opacity, and I'm gonna choose, you can either pick from this list, or if that's too confusing, we can go down here to Octane Textures and choose Image, and I'll click on Octane Alpha Image Texture. So this is just a shorter list, it makes it easier to see what's going on. And then I'll click on this folder icon and find that uh, panel 06 alpha.tiff, choose OK, and you can see now we have transparency based on the alpha of the image. Kind of an interesting looking machine, a little bit weird, but it's cool. So that's the basics of working with image textures in Octane for Maya.